my friends, and let's start right away with the Kherson direction. The Russians are complaining again that the Ukrainian armed forces have dealt with their paratroopers thoroughly. Many 200s and 300s. Alarming reports are again coming from the area of Krenki. So, yesterday, the paratroopers of the 328th Airborne Assault Regiment of the 104th Airborne Assault Division lost four BMD-4s near the road during another assault on the village of Krenki, from the forest area to the west. There are also 200 and 300. Everything happened according to the same scheme as on May 12, 23. General Teplinsky's tactics have not undergone any changes, frontal assaults with zero effect with inaccurate artillery and airstrikes, which are carried out from maximum distances. Such messages from the Russians cannot fail to please. But that's not all. I still see in the comments how armchair experts tell tales that the Ukrainian armed forces are in a cold drone and advancing there is impossible. Uh, however, if the soldiers have the upper hand and successfully defeat the Russian army, the operation is possible. And the Luzhny wouldn't continue their movement on the left bank just like that if there were no success. And even the Russians can film this. A few explanations on the situation in the area of Krenki. Many subscribers write that Krinky has become a cauldron for the Marines of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, that hundreds of them are being destroyed there, that this is a mass grave for them, that we are deliberately luring them there. We want to let go of your capricious moods a little. At our headquarters of the Dnipro Military Command, knowing the real number of our losses, we get the impression that for almost six weeks of the Battle of Teplinsky at Krinky, this place has become just a cauldron for our guys. Of course, we can't voice everything, which we have already described in a number of previous posts. Judge for yourself, during the six weeks of the Battle of Teplinsky at Krenki, where up to 2.5 enemy companies were stationed at the same time. We have already withdrawn 70 motorized rifle divisions from the KRWNK area for restoration, replenished the 61st Infantry Brigade with three companies, 104th Infantry Division near Krenki. In the last three days, we have lost five BMD-4s, and yes, two more Shoguva golf cars in early November. In general, the Russians have already realized that a cauldron has formed specifically for them. Now, let's move on to the Zaporizhia direction. Here, the Russians continue their offensive actions in the area of Verbovet. They don't achieve success, but the attacks to cease, complicating the overall situation. The Russians already know that if they continue offensive actions without stopping for a long time, there will be a moment when they will finally break through. Therefore, they adhere to this tactic and don't cease their attacks. Moreover, Shalin continues along the entire front line. In the Vuhlidar direction, the occupies continue Shalin, but no offensive actions are absorbed and the front line remains unchanged. In the Avdivka direction, intense battles are unfolding around Avdivka. The occupies continue their advance in the area of the coke chemical plant and Novobakhmutivka. Unfortunately, one of the maps updated yesterday evening based on geolocation showed that the Russians managed to capture the purification facilities. Their advance was 800 meters and the battles are ongoing. It's evident that the situation for the Ukrainian armed forces units in the fields around Vasala has now seriously deteriorated. All plantings and trenches are under the Russian sides. Similarly, on the southern flank, there are intense battles on the approaches to Tanenke. In the industrial zone, offensive actions continue, but the Russians haven't made progress and they are changing the direction of attacks again 
uh, to try to break through in another place. In addition, attacks have resumed on Pervomaisky. Further south, battles are fought on the outskirts of Marenka, and the occupiers continue attacks on Novomikhailovka. Over the day, they don't achieve success, and the front line remains unchanged. Uh, however, soon the situation may become more challenging throughout the Avdiivka direction, as the Russians are deploying new reserves, and the Ukrainian armed forces report that they are starting to change the tactics of offensive actions. The Russians have reduced their work with equipment and switched to active warfare in small groups. Informants say there will be a new influx after December 20th, because now they have been badly for large losses of scrap metal, most of them are accumulating in the rear. In the dachas near the village of Vasil, there was an assault on our positions by a group of enemies in black uniforms with blue armbands, with losses, but they were able to go there, later the guys mixed them with the ground with the help of FPV and artillery. In the Bakhmut direction, the occupiers continue their assaults in the area of Bahdani. The situation is challenging, but the Ukrainian forces manage to maintain their defense. Battles are also ongoing in the direction of Ivanovsk, and there are increasing reports that the Russians are making progress near Klushivka. Breaking news. Our guys, the Russian Ministry of Defense, entered the Ostrov stronghold, the command height above Klushivka. As long as they have entered, there is a battle going on. This is very important and fundamental news for Russia. And very bad for the armed forces of Ukraine. The source who told me this is respected by me and has not let me down yet. The video shows an artillery unit supporting the unit storming the island with fire. I know who is firing and who is storming, but it is the prerogative of the Russian Ministry of Defense to report this. The Russians, as always, are trying to claim victory at least in the information space. Uh, however, no advances in this direction have been confirmed so far, and the front line remains unchanged with ongoing battles. In the areas of Krumina and Siversk, the Ukrainian armed forces successfully repelled all attacks in the village of Ternik. Uh, however, the Russians have started advancing towards Spirne and Shalin to Sis. There have been no changes along the front line in the past days. In the Svatova era, the situation has remained unchanged for a long time. There is minimal shelling and no offensive actions are being conducted here. In the Kupinsk direction, battles continue for Sinkivka and fights have resumed in the Ivanivka area. The Ukrainian armed forces report uh, that uh, the Russians are once again deploying new units here to capture at least Sinkivka. All this indicates uh, that the Russians are suffering significant losses and they constantly have to mobilize additional forces to continue the offensive. Despite these efforts, they don't achieve success and the front line remains unchanged. So, here is a curious statement from Blinken regarding support for Ukraine, uh, hoping to convince Republicans to support a new aid package, he mentioned that still 90% of the financial assistance remains in the U.S. Put note on this, uh, and this is more for the, the American audience. If you look at the investments that we've made in Ukraine's defense to deal with this aggression, 90% um, of the security assistance we provided has actually been spent here in the United States with our manufacturers, with our production, and that's produced uh, more American jobs. Uh, more growth in our own uh, economy. Uh, so this has also been a win-win that we need to continue. And that's all from me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.